So now we're starting the concept of an arithmetic series. And if you're not familiar with an arithmetic sequence, you're going to want to back up and make sure you have that down because this is going to take it in a little bit more of a complicated direction. What a series is, is it's a sequence, but now you're adding up every number in the sequence. So it helps to know what the arithmetic sequence is first. Let's uh, just review that point. If I have the numbers 2, uh, 5, 8, 11, and so on, you can see this is an infinite arithmetic sequence, right? It's just a list of numbers. To make that into a series, I would say 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 11 plus dot dot dot. And you can see that an infinite arithmetic series has a sum you can't calculate it because it's an infinite bunch of numbers all added together. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's not going to work out so great. Usually, when you have an arithmetic series, um, you don't have an infinite one because those are boring. They just always turn into either infinity or negative infinity. So we're going to talk about, generally, finite arithmetic series. And there's a formula for it, of course. We went over this in class. It is Sn, that is a sum of some number of numbers, right? N means how many terms you have. So the sum of n terms equals whatever that n is, divided by 2, and then you multiply it by the sum of the first and the last terms. Okay? So a n is the last term in the series, a 1 is the first one, and n is the number of terms. So in this example above, uh, I'm going to pick on this guy. It's a, we could do that in our head. This actually is a good way to check it, Let's see if this formula actually works. n equals 4. There's four terms. So we take 4 over 2. And we say, what's the first number? It's 2. What's the last number? It's 11. Uh, 2 plus 11 is 13 times 4 over 2 equals 26. Well, is this true? Okay, uh, 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 8 is 15, plus 11 is 26. Yay, we proved math. So this is, um, this is the important formula for the day. Okay, And actually, sometimes... That's not the only formula you use. Sometimes there's a second summation formula. It's, you know, top secret thing. It's, it's the same thing. It's, there's no trick to this. It's just the same exact formula. Um, what makes it look a little different is sometimes you don't know what an is, but you know what the common difference is. And if you remember the explicit formula, uh, once you see this, it's, it's going to be like, oh, really, that's it? Um, so up here, I have my summation formula, and sometimes you don't know what a n is. So what you have to do is you have to not put a n there, and you put the explicit formula in its place. Okay? So here's another form of the summation formula. They're the same thing. It's just that you see the second one doesn't actually require us to know what the last number is. You still have to know how many numbers there are, you still have to know what the first term is. And instead of knowing the last number, you just need to know what the difference is between them. So if I told you that, um, well, let's pick on this guy. Let's say it kept going and going and going, and that there were 500 numbers. And I wanted to know what the sum of the first 500 terms was. Well, maybe you would do this. You would say, OK, I know the first term is 1. I know the difference is 3. Uh, and n is 500. So we, we add it up that way. Both of these are examples of using the explicit, uh, not the explicit form, the summation formula. Um, and generally, in this section, you're going to be using uh, one of these two forms of it.